Welcome friends and Merry Christmas. We are in a rather unseasonably chilly day in, here in North Carolina. I think it's the first time since we moved that we have to use heaters to, to do something in the shop. But in any case, we want to wish from, from me, Mrs. Wizard and Elpida, we want to wish you Merry Christmas. We want to do it like in a Merry Christmas. In unison. Yeah, but come Merry on. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. If today is your first visit in our channel, welcome to the craziness. Oh, no, I mean, in all seriousness, welcome. We want to extend to you a very warm welcome. We invite you to watch our 540 videos that for your convenience we have arranged in playlists. As we are confident you are going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If you have been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy Jesus. birthday. <laughs> it's, it's a, what are you doing? I had to set that channel. I, <laughs> we're not that kind of channel. I didn't think so. Okay. Anyway, wrong <laughs> turn. And it's still cold out. Yeah. Well, you know. But anyway, so we're going to turn this board into to this beautiful wine uh, rack or display. What is the name of the thing? Wine, wine rack. rack. Wine rack. You can change, of course, to have more or less bottles of wine. One of the things that is neat about this is that it is open on the side so you can have the label sewing if you so choose. So stick around we're going to show you how to make one of those for yourself or for a gift. It makes I think a very good Christmas gift. So we have the board that has nice character and we are making a, we find the middle of the board and we're going to make a mark there. And we're going to check that our, at least four bottles can fit in, in uh, that space. So we don't have four, four bottles with us, so we're going to alternate them. No. But you need space at the top, you said. Yeah, I do. But now we're just checking that they fit. Mm -hmm. So we feel four bottles will fit here, right? Yep. And we're going to start by... Uh, making this, uh, making sure that both our edges are nice and uh, uh, square and trimmed correctly, and then we're going to cut it in half, right? So let's do that. It smells good. And we have two pieces. Yay! Okay, so because we want these bottles to be, the openings for the bottles to be spaced evenly, what we had to do here was measure the half point of the board. So there's a mark here, a line mm -hmm. here. Then we also wanted to get them centered from uh, front to back. So we measured the center line there, and we have a line going down. So you can see along the entire board, there's a center line. And then the center line for the length of the board. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is make sure that each one of the holes is centered here and this way. And yep. there will be four total. Yep. And you could make it for a different number of bottles mm -hmm. depending on how big your piece is going to be. Right. We just found four to be a nice number and it makes it easy to space things um, in even increments. Mm -hmm. And so now... Too big, huh? We're looking to find the right uh, size hole saw for these bottles. And wine bottles are different dimensions as well, so you have to find something that fits most. This right? is the, the bigger of the two, right? So I think yeah. this mm -hmm. is it. And show how the other one fits differently. I mean, the other wine bottle that it's a different size. Well, it, we're using the larger one we have yes, at least. Right. You know? But just to so show. So this that, is a little smaller. Right. Yep. So you have to use some discretion. I mean, you can go bigger, but then most bottles would be floating there, you know. Right. They, they wouldn't right, look yeah. good. I mean, you could put a champagne 
uh, bottle in that one, but then these would look very out of place. Right. And just be aware that, you know, that is that is the case. Most wine bottle manufacturers, or the, the bottle manufacturers anyway, make all kinds of different shapes and sizes. All right, so we're going to get set up to start cutting. So we have marked on our board uh, the center of both dimensions of the board, right? Lengthwise and widthwise. And then uh, we first use our hole saw of choice and we make center marks with our center punch of where we want the center of each hole to be, right? And the way we did it, mm -hmm. based on the size hole saw we're using, which is a three and a half inch, um, was to measure out well, for us, it ended up being five mm -hmm. inches between right. its uh, center. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, this will work for most bottles, and you can use that measurement, but you might want to do a different measurement. Right. right? But for us, it's five inches is what we decided. So we are going to start making the holes using our hole saw. Is it forward? I was just tapping you to let you contact. So what we're doing now, we're just marking in essence the second board. So we have mm -hmm. the centers, right? Right. These are both the boards we're going to use. That's loose. Yeah, it's loose. It is loose, but the problem was that I I was in reverse. Try not to, to do damage in the holes. So we have to unfortunately re redo our clamps because we don't have enough space to put them here. And if we're doing that correctly, when we separate the boards, we should have nine centered holes, right? Should have. What happened to a smart drill that knows if I'm forward or in reverse? reverse? That's what I want. I want a smart drill that automatically reverses. Okay. So if we did this correctly, we should have nice holes Hopefully. on the second board. We have at least a mark. So well, we have good. a mark, yeah. Yeah, so that's good. That's what we needed. And we need that because we want the bottles to sit straight, right? Right. Yep. A parallel to each other, I guess. So yep. this one can go down and then you can finish doing... We need okay. some scraps. Right. Here goes nothing. So here we are, we finish uh, the openings in our, what is in essence the front of the piece, right? Mm -hmm. And this came out well, we'll need to either route them or uh, sand them. Right. I'm, I'm not sure which one we're going to do, but they look nice and centered, I think. Yeah, they look very proportional and evenly spaced. Using the same technique as before we used our bottle, we chose the size of the... Oh, yeah. it's on the drill. We, size, we chose the size of our sole hole that we're going to use for the back side of the piece, which in essence is where the bottlenecks insert, right? Right. So we're going to do that exactly the same way. Uh, we found out this to be a very neat trick using a little foam. They're inexpensive 
and if you want to not damage your your bench they are instrumental and as you can see here actually uh, one of the neat things is that it's going to help us not to have tear out on the other side because it sits very firmly on this yeah and it's a it's absorptive as well for shock yeah. and vibration and splinters it, it is very good so we're going to get prepped to put the second board so from our process before you can see we have marked our centers and this is the easiest way there is no measuring and very little chance of a mistake i, I won't say none because something will go wrong if i say none so, you know. <laughs> and the sad part is i'm not even superstitious anyway so here goes nothing again We're on fire. <laughs> so either we hit a note or something there, you know. First hole, two problems so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, now there's no end to window there. Ooh. Are we branding it or what? I have no idea what we're doing, but mm. there's something there that it doesn't like. Yeah, looks like it's got a whole lot of sap there. Yeah, it is. It's sappy? Yeah. yeah. Why would sap catch on fire? Well, it, it marks the teeth of the... Oh. And then the, the drill overheats, you know. Mm -hmm. I see. So let's see how many issues this single hole is going to give us today, right? First, for those of you that didn't catch it, our uh, drill became loose inside. So we had to reattach it. Our drill bit, I guess, not our drill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a lot of sap. Smoking. You see? Yeah, it's smoking. A lot of sap. So it has a lot of sap, and uh, now if that same smoke came out of your drill, you need to stop. I mean, you need to stop both ways. You have to clean it, but you know. So it got messy in the hole, huh? Yes, it did. Very messy. But I don't know if it was visible. You couldn't even see the teeth. That's why it's yeah. Clumpy. Sticky. What is that sound? What we are learning is that boards with a lot of sap <laughs> do not like to be drilled in. Or sawed <clears throat> at a I fast mean, speed. It's a... Mm -hmm. uh, it's clearly making its mark on this wood. Uh, the wood is fighting back. Um, at this point, it's drill three, wood four. Um, <laughs> well, let's see if we're going to need another one or we're going to make it this time. Of course, that's all we needed was a little bit of enthusiasm. In all my years doing woodworking, I've never seen a piece of wood having so much sap that ganks the, the saw. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I it's mean, not that's a, nothing, actually. Yeah, it's really not that bad right now. Yeah, I mean, but uh, you can see all the, the filings, that uh, bits that we've had to pick off of the saw. This is actually... Uh, Char. Cool. <laughs> yes, it is. Burnt wood. Cool. What happens? All right. Anyway, let's... You can see a little bit in there, but it's still not as bad as it was getting because all, all right. of that was gunking up on the bit. Oh, yeah. Well, this is all the gunk right here yeah. that you've picked off. Okay. So here we are, our first dry fit. And as you can see, it is shaping very nicely. We have our two bottles there. And we are happy with this dimension, right? I mean, that's yep. what we're going to, to keep it as. So we need to do a finishing. This is a finished piece. It will be a display piece. So we need to finish it. We need to sand it. Blasphemy. I, I, mm -hmm. I said the S word. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We need to sand it and we need to make a very nice tight fittings. We yep. decided we don't want to sew hardware. So we're going to use dowels as the connection method. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to it. We're going to show you the steps as we go along. But in essence, you get an idea of how this will look. Yep. Thank you. 
We don't have an oscillating sander yet, so we are going old school with sanding the inside of the openings by using a dowel and putting around it uh, some sanding paper. And how does that work, Mrs. Wizard? Well, so far so good. It definitely gets the contour right. An oscillating sander is a tool we have wanted for some time. And by we, you mean you? All of us. The <laughs> urban home sanding channel people. <laughs> But you always have to work with what you have, right? Yeah. You always have to work with what you have. And then you go to Harbor Freight and you buy an oscillating sander. Mm -hmm. No? So get more subscriptions. Mm. And then we can do that. Yeah. See how that works? Mm, I see. So, guys, <laughs> Miss Wizard think it is all your fault. You're not subscribing enough. So, you know, get to it so I can get a sander. But, you know, not everyone can afford as we are proof, an oscillating sander. So you, this this would apply to people who don't have such sophisticated tools. Yeah, I guess. See? So we're not sophisticated now. We're getting there. Mm. So we decided not to have any metal fasteners on this piece. We're going to use dowels as the connector points here. So we have put the top or the bottom, we don't know which one is yet, right? Uh, in, a, in alignment. And we're going to make the dowel holes next that will allow us to, to complete the piece and have it secure. So these uh, little clamps, once again, uh, are proving Save the day. To be very, very useful. Yep. And also we use the other piece to make sure that Everything aligns correctly and it looks like it does, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get right with you. So we put two dowels per side here. And you can see the dowel there, which we think adds character to the piece. So when we stain it, it's going to stain differently because it's different species of wood. And uh, we're not going to do anything about it. We like how it looks, right? So we put total four dowels per piece, two per side, right? So four on the bottom and four on the top. So this piece has zero metal fasteners mm -hmm. holding it on. And if you look at the corners, we try to make them nice and flat, and, and we're very happy with our corners. Yeah. And accentuate, as you can see here, the rings of the wood. It's a nice complement to this uh, nice grain, right? So it will stain even nicer, it will be more, more pronounced. And, and we think overall it's going to go well. We use glue in the joint and we use the dowels. And all the weight on this piece will be in this direction, right? So the joint doesn't have to be extremely strong this way because there is no stress on this joint, right? Mm -hmm. So it should carry even the heaviest bottles of wine, mm -hmm. as long as they are not bigger than three and a half diameter, right? Right. But anyway, we are doing, uh, this wizard is doing some final uh, touch up with. Uh, the sand, sanding paper, and we're going to be ready to start staining in just a moment. So we're getting ready to uh, stain the piece. We've finished all the preliminaries, the sanding, and of course, it is now in its final form. It is supposed to be vertical. We have it in a horizontal orientation. I guess it doesn't supposed to, right? I mean, it can be either well, way, but... That's the design for it, though. Since it is a gift, they can use it any way they want, right? Okay. Are we test? Yeah, this is a test stain because I'm not familiar with the stain. It's new. What color is it? It is walnut. dark walnut. I think that's pretty It'll nice. Be, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It just looked weird in the. In the yeah, it's got a kind of a reddish tint, to check, doesn't right? it? Yeah, a little bit. But it's ultimate wood stain. Ultimate. We graduated to the ultimate wood mm. stain. Mm. 
And I always like how stain immediately changes the, the look of it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. We will finish this process, and by we, we mean uh, Miss Wizard. And we'll be right back with you. Well, friends, and this is our finished product. We have two sample bottles there to see how they fit. And you might notice that there are two different sizes. The, the necks are different. Mm -hmm. So it, it is quite versatile in uh, what you can display in it. Of course, you can finish it different ways. You can whitewash it or definitely paint it or leave it as it is. We did use a router to route the circle the entrance areas and also uh, we did it on the, the rear holes just to give it a little more of visual interest, right? You don't have to do that necessarily and you could achieve the same thing with sanding, especially with the sanding method we show you with the dowel. But of course routing makes it easier. Faster. Faster, yeah, absolutely, definitely faster. So what else do we have to say about that? Uh, this can be not only a fun personalized project, but a fairly inexpensive one at that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend a lot of money to no. to make it. We uh, used scraps, didn't we, from another project? I don't remember, but I mean, it was almost a full board when you when you calculate everything, right? Mm -hmm. So you need only about a board of uh, of wood. We we like this wood because, as you can probably see, it has really nice um, grain, right? At least I think it's a very nice grain. The dowels give it a, a more rustic look. You don't see any hardware that can dis distract from it. And it is a very nice presentation if you have a party or what else you can use it for. Well, I mean, I just think it's nice to have some wine um, accessible in the kitchen or you know, in your dining area. You can display your pretty bottles. Um, it, it's just a nice way to store your wine and yeah, you're supposed so. to store them sideways not upright anyway so this makes that easy absolutely so we hope you enjoyed this episode of the urban homesteading channel if you did please give us a thumbs up if you didn't the other button works as well share like subscribe let us know what you would like to see us build in the future down in the diddly dub have a merry christmas and a happy new year Keep safe, put your masks on, uh, wash your hands so we can see you again next week. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and of course the Urban Homesteading Channel, farewell friends.